What's up, buddy? What's up, Nick? So welcome, guys. Just gonna take a few minutes to to see if more people are gonna join the live. Nick, uh, let me know if you see a, a button over there, like uh, asking to to join the live, like to send a request. Do you see anything? I was invited already, you know, to to be part of a live. But I never invited myself to someone to... Oh, maybe I found in here. One second. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I got in here. Yeah. Yeah, now... Oh, cool. So, this is going to be a fun one. Like, it's been, you know, some time that I, I wanted to to do something different uh, in this stress and analysis, not just bringing my own perspective. Because since I started the channel, it's, it's been only uh, me and Tato Fabian running the channel. Like I kind of started recently, you know, just giving my insights and you know, just putting everything that I learned and that I have been learning so far with Tato Fabian too and also my, my classmates. But there are other people there who are brilliant, that bring lots of, you know, amazing insights that uh, I really like for you to meet. I intended to to do this live on, on YouTube, but we kind of had technical issues you know, trying to go live together because this is a brand new feature uh, on YouTube, and I don't think it's kind of working properly so far. And so I had to move the the live stream here to Instagram. So, but you are probably seeing that on on YouTube because I'm going to be uploading like the the full live, so you can watch it on on YouTube as well. And here on Instagram, I'm also going to leave that saved. And so this is going to be a very fun one because I'm going to have like my, my classmates, my friend Nick from the mayaday.com. Uh, it would be really nice for you to, to get to know him. And because he's been like for a long time here following the, uh, the Maya calendar. And here Tata Fabian too also joined the, the live stream. So... It's going to be a very, very fun one. So I'm going to be inviting Nick here so he can introduce himself. And before we start analyzing this special Tresena here. And then from, from now. Hey. Hey. Can you see me? Hey, Nick. Yeah, I can see you. Can you hear me properly? Yeah. How about you? Oh, cool. I got my earpods in. Yeah, I can hear you. I can see your, your nice background there with your logo. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Amazing. Man. How are you doing? I'm, yeah, I'm doing good, man. Thanks for accepting doing this live just in analysis. Yeah. With me. Yeah, thanks so for I'm, inviting me. Yeah, my pleasure. And people enjoy this the, this format of contact. We can come back here and do because the more information, you know, the more valuable information you can pass, you know, to to people where they can learn more about you know, the the Maya calendar, you know, and, and getting more insights for life, the better. Yeah. So can we start by introducing yourself, just talking a little bit, you know, about your your story with the the Maya? Aloha, Nathan. Nice to see you here again, my friend. Yeah, for sure. Uh, my name is Nicholas Krieger. Uh, I've been studying the Mayan calendar for over 15 years. Uh, been going down southern Mexico and Guatemala uh, since 2010. Um, been all around down there. Lots of different uh, archaeological sites. Um, yeah, and I've um, had the opportunity to have two great teachers of the Mayan calendar, one being a Papian Teu, that Eduardo knows, and uh, my first teacher, Jose Jaramillo. Um, and yeah, I'm uh, super passionate about the Mayan calendar, and uh, I have my own platform where I uh, teach about it and make art and do my own analysis. 
um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for those who are arriving here, I just gonna post here uh, Nick's website, mayanday.com, if you wanna check it out in there. And also, you know, you can click in here so somewhere in here in the screen to also you know check his Instagram and start following him. And and this like Nick has traveled a lot, you know, through through this Mayan sites, especially you know, to to Palenque. And today we're gonna be analyzing the King's Pacao you No know, Tresena. Your specialty. Yeah. So maybe we could start like um we can and uh, I can give like a usually like from what I pick up from the last time, and then we start like uh, with ah maybe I, I do some additional, then I go the other one that you do some initial notes, then we, we go yeah the chain yeah whatever you want to do it sounds great yeah and then if by the end of the the live more people join if you have questions you can also leave here in the comment even after the lives if you have questions I'll leave it there in the comments and. So here go, here going to start our present analysis. Well, we just finished the Oshilahu E, the 13 Pathfinder Tresena, which was the Tresena that we spoke about the, the accumulation of, of purposes, the accumulation of goals. You know, that maybe you, you maybe encounter like the meaning of your life, the meaning of the, the purpose of the things you're doing. But sometimes it could be be the Tresena that can accumulate you no know, melancholies and lead you to frustration, like whenever you're not able to, to find a path. So it was a very delicate Tresena as we came from like the Oshlahu Kawu Tresena was also a very feminine one. Those Tresenas were really good for having insights, you know, to ponder about the life, ponder about the path, you know, like the direction to where you would like to be following. And, but those Tresenas Tresenas like were very very soft comparing to this one we're gonna be entering right now, like the the Oshilohue maybe you know can be very auspicious you know for us to start you know planning trips you know like exploring the the spiritual realms, but sometimes you know it can lead us to to feel a little bit lost or just to you not know, wanting to move forward because we don't want to let go of like what we achieved in the past, but life doesn't wait for us we, we need we still need to continue move forward and that was the what the accumulation of the pathfinder was pushing the tresena forward nick do you have any comments about the the past tresena about like any insights like oh, what the oshilahu e the 13 pathfinder tresena can represent to you yeah i think or how you present it uh, yeah go on uh, my main insight for uh this last Tresena from Hunaku uh, to uh, Oshilahu E. Um, I think one of my major takeaways is that uh, um, the path the path rules the sun. The sun is ruled by a path. And to the ancients, the sun is on the path because the sun is uh, represents the hero. So the hero goes on the journey and goes on the path and the story is always a reflection of um that path being through the heavens so um i think for me the mayan calendar has a lot of uh ar archetypal sort of metaphors that it teaches us or can teach us about life and in almost every way so um Another thing I really like about our Tresena, because both me and Eduardo are uh, in, in this Tresena, um, is that I've always seen Hunahpu to be sort of like, you know, because they say it's the sun or the 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 blow gunner because of the glyph, and mm. that um, comes from a Mayan story of uh, I think it's Hun Hunahpu who who uh, kills Wuku Kakish with the blowgun. Uh, anyway, uh, I've always seen it as a sort of day of consciousness. Um, uh, um, most of the like new age Mayan calendar people will tell you it's the day of enlightenment. 
So it's kind of got this like guru vibe to it. And uh, um, so I always kind of attribute it to being sort of like relevant to just pure consciousness in a sense, like elevating your consciousness as a person. Um, and, and E being a path um, is sort of like a mask you build because uh, y your ego is your path because the choices you make along your path in life become who you are. So the road is, co is connected to your, your ego. And then you don't have to, you know, think of ego as such a bad thing all the time because we need it as a human being to express ourselves and to just, you know, be animated. Mm -hmm. um, but what's really amazing about the calendar is that in the middle of those two days is Kame, Huku Kame, which is the death. And I think it's interesting. It's like between man and God is the bridge of death. And that's what reflects, reflects us in this uh, spiritual reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's the, the very interesting, like if we talk about like the uh, E being the meaning, because we know the meaning of the life is, is death. And also, as we mentioned, uh, like the, the sun like, is the hero. So the E is the path that the hero needs to, to run to overcome the challenges. And that was one of the things that the, 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 the each Asena talks a lot about, you know, like the, how do you create the, the purposes, but with every purposes that comes with a new challenge that you need to face. We cannot run away from that. Even if we want like a, an easy life, not moving forward, like we're still going to be facing challenges. And Kame, there in the middle can be, you know, the path of the, the frustration because if the Hunarpu is the one that the hero needs to face the darkness, like the hero has fears, like sometimes afraid to, to cross the bridge that you mentioned. So it can lead to a dark path, like whenever, you know, like the, the hero needs to retract and decide not to move and not to follow the path. So he can end up, you know, being frustrated for not overcoming his fears. And now I see connecting to this Tresena that we're going to be beginning with Hun Ah and we're going to be accumulating to 13 Khan. Because Depending on the frustrations, you know, like if we are not able to follow the path or something happened in, in between, we're going to be having to confront, having to transform. Because even if like, we succeed, like if we win the battle, like life doesn't stop there. We need to continue changing. Like there is always uh, like a new cycle repeating. So we have to transform again. There is always going to be, you know, something incomplete. Or maybe, like, if we ended up, like, having no choice, okay, we need to find another possibilities because we need to intervene. Otherwise, you know, like, those feelings that we, depending on how the past or sin went for each one of us, do, those frustration you know, can start with a new bitterness in this trasena that can accumulate in poison, you know, in, uh, something toxic at the end of it. Like, when you are consumed by... All of all the all the fury that can like the frustration can lead if we don't don't cross that if we don't pay attention don't become conscious that we need to intervene to go back to like uh, the 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 track that is going to bring most of uh, our well being for us. And what can you tell about this Tresena before we start the, uh, the analysis one to one? Uh yeah, it's uh. It's an amazing Tresena to analyze. It definitely has a lot of mystery in it. Um, for me, uh, I think you, you had some great points there with, I mean, obviously Ah is about transformation. Um, and uh, Khan having a multitude of different qualities makes, there's, there's a lot to analyze in this Tresena. I think if we just start start going then it'll come out mm -hmm. <laughs> great before i just start here just to to answer nathan uh, he asked why did the maya put high uh high sync on on venus so 
it's more like for for counting, uh, more for agricultural purposes. You no, know, like the, they follow the tract of Venus for fertility as well. Has this um, symbol of fertility, and and, and also for for the counting of, of the corn, which is like uh, why we name the like the the Venus count. Do you have something to add to the to this question, Nick? Yeah, uh, I don't remember um, the exact um, like story or legend that the Maya have for Venus, but I know that um, most ancient cultures uh, tracked Venus pretty closely, and I know that they're like in myths and legends have been this sort of love affair between the sun and Venus, mm. um, and the astronomical significance um if you look into it i think it's that venus draws a like a, a when venus um transits in front of the sun you see the dot of venus on the face of the sun that happens five times in eight years i think i might have that switch mm -hmm. but i think yeah. it's five times in eight years and it draws draws the pentagram so there's some very very like significant occult things involved with the um, the movement of Venus in regards to the sun. Um, I have mm -hmm. in my notes somewhere that um, how how Venus matches up with the uh, the Hob and the Zolkine is is pretty interesting as well. Um, mm -hmm. And also the Mayan the Mayans had uh, Venus tables and I believe like some pretty large ones. So it was. It was, it was obvious that they were really paying attention to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. And I think it's, it's so fascinating how we can, you know, track, you know, like how, how they mark, you know, like counting the, the Venus as when he rises as a morning star and sometimes when he rises as an evening star. Mm -hmm. That is always come, you know, into the, the south and the, the west family. Like, mm -hmm only in these two families, which means like the, when, uh, when I mean about the, for those who, who don't know, the South family is related to the uh, now cut, burning to ashes or a net. Now canoe is the seed. Also, Hunarpu, the conqueror son, Ahmak, complementarity, and now E, the pathfinder. And the West is gonna be now Tsi, the dog, uh, Nawal Ishvalam, the jaguar. Nawal Tihash, the cut. Nawal Yak, the the wind. And Nawal Kameh, the ancestors. So these are the nows that we can see that like the the risings of, of Venus. It's very interesting because every time you see one of these nows, you're gonna be seeing like a movement in Venus. So so here you go. Let's start uh, with the, the analysis. And then if you have like more questions, you can answer after the analysis, okay? I just wanted to add that I, I think if my numbers are correct that the Venus synodic year lines up with the Zolkine every 100, 146 Zolkines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I wasn't exactly no, uh, sure about uh, the amount of numbers, but yeah. Maybe a Papillon can clarify for us. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he if he's here. Like, and maybe yeah, but you know he's not online uh, at the moment. But we'll maybe later he can come back. Yeah, to, to clarify more about the this Venus question. But uh, thanks for bringing that, Nathan. I'm gonna reply that after we do the the Tristan analysis, because then we can have more time to to expand in uh, in your questions. Okay. So Nick, can you do any start with the, the analysis? Yeah. Oh, you want me to start? Yeah. Okay. okay yeah. Uh, so what a great uh, way to start out by being invited to Eduardo's awesome podcast and, or I don't know what you call it, like video cast. This is my first really um, introduction to publicly speaking about the Mayan calendar. So it's a, I'm probably going to be a little bit shaky, but I'm trying my best. It's going to be great, man. 
They will always bring great insights. I'm right pretty on. sure people are going to be loving you know, cool. listening to that. Thanks. Well, I think it's it's right on time because Ah uh, kind of has this, um, well, to the Mayans, Ah uh, is the read um, and also transformation. And the New Age sort of version of the Mayan calendar really, you know, took the whole read concept and flew with that. But the idea is that the read is flexible but rigid on the inside. And I think that sort of speaks to the idea of transformation in itself. Um, but there's another part about the read and that uh, how it is paradoxically hollow. And, hmm. and, and that's sort of a new age thing too, but I really liked it and I kind of have put it on my, my uh, put it back in the, you know, like in the attic or something to kind of think about later. But um, um, anyway, uh, the, the new trace saint of ah is an invitation of transformation, an invitation to uh, transform in the way you want to. And ah, being transformation is incompleteness because you cannot transform without being incomplete. Uh, it's a um, it's a paradox. It's in between two worlds. Um, the reeds were gathered and bundled up to separate the from like as a wall from the outside mm -hmm. world. The Mayan homes would be the walls would be like bundled. Uh, canes, and I don't, I don't know if they used like old corn stalks or, but there is this, uh, yeah. yeah, there's this idea that uh, ah is the cane or the staff because it's the plant growing vertically, and the glyph sort of the glyph of ah sort of gives that um, a bit visually, um, and then another thing I have for ah. Is that uh, let's see. I had it written down? A really interesting thing coming from 13E into the Tracena of Ah is Ah is in between E and Ishbalam, and and in that sense, it kind of tells you that it is a wall, uh, a wall between your yourself and the outside world. And uh, mm -hmm. I think there's a big significance to meditate on with that. But yeah, it's the invitation to transform, mm -hmm. um, the invitation to be incomplete, the beginning to tra transform mm -hmm. that incompleteness into what, what where you mm -hmm. want to go, what you want to be. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. you want to finish that one off? Yeah. That Oh, that was great, Nick. That was really great. And co just connecting uh, some stuff because I remember when I was doing like the the new artwork for for the novels that I'm gonna be sharing very soon. Uh, like the the top parts, what I found out about Ah, because also represents whenever like the the corn uh, they put the corn to dry in the houses. Uh, you, know, oh, you have like the nice. leaves in yeah. there. So that kind of represents, you know, like the corn just drying wow. uh, in the house. Great. Yeah, that was something that, like, that, I, that I learned about the, the glyph of Nawah in this representation. Yeah, that's amazing. Because I, I remember when I was uh, also doing the research in the, in the old houses, I see that, that they put, you know, like lots of uh, corn leaves around there with the reed, with the bamboos, you know, to, to build the houses as yeah. well to, to fill the, the holes. Yeah, like a boundary. A yeah, it's a separation. A boundary. Yeah, a separation, in a sense. But uh, and it, it's like like the the transformation that happens between those two sides. Exactly. What I can add, what I can see a lot in here, like connecting from the past, just in to this one when you see it about an hour. Ah, because whatever, like we got through, like the. The each ascent because we can be you know like uh, ended up you know getting like frustrated because of the path like we decided to walk, and that you know like, like when we are frustrated like when we have to wake up in the next day like when 
like whenever we we tend to feel like uh, we fail, you know, uh, doing something, and then we need to 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 move on. Like we need to to face another day, and just like you, you just have to face, you know, like the, the those gray colors inside of you, you know, that they need to put you. Okay, or or we have to do something, you know, or you're going to or you're going to draw, you know, into into that feeling. So there, like, uh, if we don't treat, I think that's where, like, uh, the now number one, the, the who, which that's the now that's just trying to looking for a path of transformation. But sometimes, you know, like, the, it can transform for the, for the side where it could be, you know, even dirtier, like, when, whenever Ah goes into cynicism, or mm -hmm. because, you know, like, couldn't uh, stand like that, just like if the son in the past, the Senna, like, didn't win the battle. So now Ah needs to transform because it's feel like great inside. Ah can also represent like like the the uh, the thing that is unquiet, like like anxiety that runs inside of us. Mm. And so that like we, if we don't treat, is going to be accumulating into something that can be dangerous. Mm. Just like the what is going to grow in this stress center we need to pay attention at the end with this new transformation is going to be now our con that is coming to announce something that we need to pay attention to like an announce of changes in nature just like the the, the, found, the sound of thunder comes to bring like uh, changes in uh, humidity in the air so it's just like the, when you have like the the sign especially because in the middle we see the Nawalka Wook which is going to be you know, the, the shit lightning where you can see and intervene, you know, before it gets, you know, ugly or uglier. But these new changes, you know, can be a, a, a great way, you know, for us to, you know, to, whenever you feel like we are stuck, maybe you can find out our strength and be able, you know, to, to use all those changes on, on our favor, you know, inter intervene to, onto something good. You know, and then moving to uh, Keb Ishvala, uh, two Jaguar, where two is the retraction, two is uh, taking one step back, you know, for you to do a better calculation. And now Ishvala, that represents the, the planet Earth, like the, the material world, like the magic that happens, you know, inside of Earth that makes things develop. Like the like the gestating, like the this abundance in material that you have, like the the material that we use for uh, our uh, temporary needs during our our time living here, and so I see now too Ishvalam being like the the retraction of the development or retract to uh, uh, get more resources in case you need to use. 